No, I'm all right. Oh, I've got all these cards in my pocket. There's a uh, beef in the fridge for sandwiches, and there should be enough bread on the side. Cause I was going to grab some. Yeah. Um, but they had no Jacksons in that shop. No. No, thank you. Can I have one of these baguettes? Or not? Are they for something? Just to eat, eat them. Can I have one? Um, yeah, I'm on my live video. <laughs> <laughs> yes, have one of them. Oh, I, I am. Hiya Hilly, sorry I'm late love, got distracted in town, post office, batty clubs and oh yeah the artists and fairs back on at the Beacon Portal in town so I wanted to pop in there and go and see um, the crafters that are in. So I got distracted. I want to get your head on. Get on the blanket and stop mithering me. No, you're not missing me. I've literally just come in the house and switched on because I said I'd be there at noon. I did say noon-ish, so technically I'm still in noon. So, yes, I've literally just run in the house. Dog's whinging at me. Oh, no, she's having a scratch. Uh, no, definitely didn't miss me, love. Didn't miss me. Oh, town's quiet, though. Town's... Well, it's sort of busy, but... The people in the, um, they've been in there since 10 o'clock this morning and hardly anybody's been in. But there's no one down in the harbour. It's really, really quiet. So I got Phil a t-shirt and I got myself a, a bracelet with um, Tibetan silver and agate beads on there. And I picked up some cards for some local crafters as well. Maybe, possibly, add-ins for Christmas advents. So, yeah. So, a bit of networking, a bit of networking, but it's where I'm hoping to be myself next month. So, it was reconnecting. Um, yeah, everyone's on holiday, so there's hardly anyone around, and who's got the money? Right, don't know what's going on, but I keep cutting out, and I shouldn't be. Bear with me a second, I'm just going to come out me. Right, I've come out of the internet, so it's just stop dropping me off. Hiya, Deborah. There, should be fine now. So, yeah. Sewing needle. Where am I putting the sewing needle? It's in my hand. Right, if I stick it in there, then I won't lose it. It's all right if I lose it. It's not one of my magic ones. I have these brilliant sewing needles. that um, They've got like a, a double open end at the top. So, because I'm struggling to thread sewing needles, I've had them for you. I think Phil found them for me one day in a haberdashery shop down in Southampton. I put the um, thread at the top of it and then pull it down and it, it actually threads itself. So, it's so much easier to use. So, I've had to point you in this direction because my project bags for the Christmas Advents are on that door. And I can't let you see them. Oh... So I've just had a load of new material turn up today that I ordered yesterday. It came super, super quick. It amazes me how much if you stick a pound on an order, then it turns up the next day. So, yeah, so I've just had that. That's for some new project bags that will be hitting the website soon. So I just need to have a think about... I've got a pattern 
um, patterns, but I like to sort of tweak the patterns to, so they're my own. So like just so you get the basic shape and measurements of what you need. And then I'll cut out cardboard and, and either reduce the size of it um, and make cardboard templates. Spoil sport. I know, and I a bugger. I know. Did you not notice that I did a post yesterday and all the pictures are black and white? Yeah. So you'll see that quite often over the next few months. So I have dyed up um, two, 2.1 kilos of blended fibre rovings. In other words, seven mini braid fibres. Um, I've got one that's decided to go AWOL. I have no idea where the heck that's gone. It's somewhere in here. I mean, I don't think I've used it. Definitely don't think I've used it, but it's in here somewhere. So once I've got that one done, that's all the um, that'll be all the mini braid blended fibres, all dyed and ready to split and pack. So that's one down, and then the mini bats, the rovings I'm dying for those to blend. I think I've got three or four of those lots done. So that's about but hey, just under a kilo of wool dyed for those. I've still got another eight to do of those and then get them all split up and blended up that's fine not a problem so yeah and i've started getting little bits and pieces in so i'm getting there it will all be more or less ready for like september october and then i think it was october i was ready last year and i was sat here twiddling my thumbs waiting to post them so I, but i'd rather give myself a bit more time in case i end up poorly or having a bad week or something crops up so I'm ahead. Oh, and I've done, I have done uh, 1.2 kilos of four different types of locks. So they're all dyed. I've just got one more batch to do. And then they're all ready to get wrapped up. I've just got to sit there and separate them all. So that might be a weekend. Um, a weekend of... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? A weekend of binge watching Marvel movies and sitting and doing all those locks because it will take me the best part of a day easily to separate all them. Sorry, Bongo Batty, I'm not doing share videos, love. Um, so, yeah. So, what have you been up to, Hilly? Um, I've, yeah, Batty Clubs are done. They've been sent out. I've just sent out new emails. So, if anybody's not received their email because i have had a few say that they're not getting them you need to go and have a look in your spam box or junk mail box and just type in willy cottage and if it's there it will pop up because if you've subscribed or drop me a contact or add me to subscription then you've definitely received an email because i've sent out 130 emails today and they've all gone so, um, yeah, that's where you'll find them and you'll find your discount code. And whenever I refer to VIP discount codes, that means that if you've received your discount code in your email, that means you. So you can use them. Um, finished the baby star blanket and started a virus shawl. Do you know, I've never done a virus shawl. I still haven't finished off the trim of that shawl yet. I meant to, I should have done it yesterday when I wasn't really doing much, but I haven't done it. It was very naughty of me. But I've been making bags. And it takes ages to do that. God, it takes me like a morning to cut out all the material just for two bags. And then you've got to iron it as you sew it. So then that's more farting about. But I got my new snazzy sewing machine. Oh, it's stuck. What's it got stuck on? I got my new snazzy. It's all, it's all right, Bungle Batty. <laughs> So yeah, I got my new snazzy sewing machine. It threads itself and everything. So that makes my life a little bit easier. And it's so quiet. It's really, really good. And it wasn't expensive. It was actually, I bought this from Donnell. Um, I bought this from Donnell for 160 quid. Now, I did sell my little singer promise um, for a fair, fair decent amount of money as well. So it didn't cost me that much to buy that. Um... But if you go onto the Singer distribution website online, which is actually based in Derbyshire, they're selling them for about a hundred. I think it's one hundred and eighty nine quid for the Singer Fashion Mate or the Singer three 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 three. 
um and they're, they're yeah 100 i think it was 189 quid or 179 quid but they're doing 20 percent. they're doing um discount codes so i think it's 20 pounds off for any purchase that you do with them so i would have gone with them if i couldn't get this out of dunelm and it it sold out but i've always had singer sewing machines i've learnt sew on my mum's old sew machine and it's older than me and it still works that's saying something because i don't work that well anymore i've got a donkey <laughs> i've got a dodgy bobbin <laughs> yeah my bobbins definitely rattle now they definitely need some oiling um so yeah so no bongo but it is perfectly fine love i was like oh video requests i don't know how to do them i don't know how to accept them um so yeah so what else have we been doing just getting dying done i've had a really bad fatigue week this week and i i slept i think i was in bed for i think it was what half seven the other night and i never woke up till silly o'clock yesterday morning i was absolutely shattered and it's not the heat it's definitely fibro kicking off but sometimes when you when you're me you just keep going until you can't <laughs> you can't go any longer and you sit down and you can feel yourself falling off to sleep at half past four in the afternoon you're like no no joe you need to go and get your head down love so yeah we started painting the bedroom well say started i started it and then i could feel this fatigue building up so phil has nearly finished it and now we're stuck with a seven foot king size bed <laughs> <laughs> up against the chimney breast wall and only, you can only get around it one way and if I go right round the other side of the chimney breast I literally have to climb onto my bed like Rapunzel because I can't get into my bed and then I have to shimmy down it in the morning which is never a good look no so there's no room to swing a cat in our bedroom at the moment I haven't got much further in moving my stock upstairs we'll get there Oh, thank you, sweetie. You have zero tech knowledge, but enjoy my post. Oh, you're more than welcome to drop a comment. I do like a good giggle. Yeah. Um, so where, what have I been today? So, yeah, the Beacon Portal, if you're ever in Whitehaven, if you've ever been to Whitehaven, you, there's the Beacon Museum down in the harbour. And just, there's like, um, as you're going into the museum, it looks like a, a really fat lighthouse, is really what it looks like. And then if you turn up the little hill at the side of it opposite, there's another shorter version of the same building and it's called the portal. And it's usually where they have conferences and meetings and stuff and the council will use it in all sorts. But they do an artisan's fair in there and it is proper artisans. It's all handcrafted items. And so the first person I walked into was a woman called Sue who couldn't even remember her Facebook page, bless her. And she was felt in angels and fairies and sacred familiar dolls so that was perfect i was like oh have you ever heard of woodley cottage so yeah and guess who never had any business cards with her she's out there networking she hasn't even got any business cards she's just saying she's woolly cottage who's to say that i'm not <laughs> oh moron i'll have to remember next time so yeah and she's got fibromyalgia as well so that was really nice so we had something really in common so hopefully she'll be there next month when well, she said that she's there all the time so that'll be cool so um yeah and then there was an artist in there and there was a woman who makes holistic soaps and um bath teas um what else did she do it was expensive anyway put it that way um it was out of my price range and there was another woman but she was to talk to her so i couldn't really see her stall but i think it was all like silver jewelry but like wired type jewelry and then upstairs there was a couple of more up there and there was a, a guy called ralph i actually picked up his business card um kiko art glass so he makes like um like you know that glassware that you see that's quite easy to do you just need it in the kiln and you shape all the the glass into bits and stuff well he does these little gorgeous magnets and key rings and coasters and stuff like that as well as these weird bendy clock things and i'm sure he was at the fair i did two years ago at um the concert hall the civic hall in whitehaven which was an absolute flop I think I sold one of my felted gnomes and that literally covered the price of my stall. 
Yeah, so we did that. So, yeah, went upstairs. So I spoke to him. So I might be um, getting some bits from him for him a Christmas advent, maybe. And then I looked at another lady's work. It was all glass stuff, but it was a bit too pricey. But at the end of the day, it was just what I had in my budget to spend if I wanted to spend anything. And then I found this lady who did these gorgeous beaded things. And she makes go um, lovely friendship bracelets, but from sailing threads and um, sailing ropes and stuff. So that's where I bought this from. So I've got her card. And then I met this gorgeous Hungarian couple who do um, printed mugs and, and um, T-shirts and stuff. So I bought Phil a T-shirt because it had Valhalla on it. So hopefully that's him happy. Um, but that was about, it was only a tenner for that. So he's like, I heard you say that you were business. I says, yeah. He says, I do merchandise. I says, oh, maybe, maybe. Does that get, I'm, I have been playing about, there's certain phrases that I use when I'm doing, spinning the Andes from World of Will that you recommended. It filled up nicely in small swatch, quite sturdy, not very soft, but robust. Yeah, it definitely, it, it's probably something that I would use if I was going to knit some sort of Aran jumper because you're going to have a shirt underneath it. Um, but yeah, definitely, I think it's, it's a, a really good heavyweight Aran wool is what I would use that for. Or I would use it for knitting blankets or scarves or proper outdoor hats and things like that. Mittens, socks, um, thick blankets. It'd be really good for weaving with, Alison. Um, God. Alison, Bongo Batty, oh my God, yes, yes. I'm not going to associate Bongo Batty with Alison, really, am I? Hope you didn't fall in the rock pools the other day. No, no, I've only ever done that once. I nearly broke my kneecap. I'll never do it again. Yeah, and it's invisible algae. It's not this side. We don't really have rock, we don't have rock pools here. Went walking with the dog in the tide going out. Um, and I took some pictures and posted the other day. Oh my God, that water. I have never felt that water being so cool. And I have not gone wading in the water since I was probably about eight. When we went to Rill. Um, and stayed at my, or my Auntie Brenda's husband, my Uncle Les. At his mum's bungalow. Like a summer chalet that they have down there. And it's right on the other side was the beach going on and it was infest in infestated. I can't even say that. Infested with jellyfish. And I've never been going wading through the water since that day. But I did the other day with her and it was absolutely gorgeous. And she's never gone in the water like that before. So, yeah, it was nice. But if we want the rock pools, we have to go over to the parton side of the beach. We were on the sort of the Lauka parton. But you go on the parton side of the beach um, and that's all like really prehistoric sandstone and it's actually quite well known for looking for finding fossils up there but you have to know what you're looking for um, so yeah and it's got invisible algae on it so if you're not careful you will take an e-cap or two out even an elbow it's embarrassing when you're like 40 something you crack your ass and you're sitting there holding your knee crying your eyes out like a five-year-old <laughs> yeah I thought I was going to lose my kneecap that day. Stuck in the beach, never had my phone with me. I had the dog with me. I mean, what use that she is. So, yeah. So, I've never done that again. So, yeah, definitely good value for money. A very versatile will. It's, one, it's got to be one of my favourite at the moment. And I've actually... Did you get the stricken or just the plain, uh, the plain one um, of the Andes, Alison? Is that the stricken there? Where is it? This is, oh, this is the stricken. I don't know if you're able to see. But the stricken, I don't know if you're able to see it, has, like, can you see those definitions? It's sort of, in between the cream, it is actually got, like, those grey undertones. So the stricken, to me, makes me think a bit like an oatmeal wool. So it's, it's not white, but it's got these grey fibres that flick through it. You can just about see that. Yeah, mate, yeah, you can see the like the grey definitions in there. The play well, the grey one's got a bit more definition in it, and if you wanted to um use that for knitting with, I would say it's got a little bit more character to it. Um getting the stricken one. 
until they stop selling it i will keep ordering that in i really love that and i might have to make myself a project with this one soon though i've always got a project on the go but i never seem to get it started <coughs> oh bless me started or finished i really need to take some time out for myself but i've got to be flat on my back before it's actually stop <laughs> it's quite yeah they are very creamy colors the stricken's the exact same color but you get the grey version of the Andes wool as well. And it's that that's been just very gently blended through the stricken version of it. So I would definitely, if you're going to order it again, order the stricken one and give that one a go. It's definitely got a lot of character in it. Oh dear. And it dyes up really pretty as well because even though, even though you're getting like your cream bases on it, you've still got like those little streaks of grey through there. But it is a lovely wool to work with. I quite like it. And I think it's quite soft. I would I would put that in comparison to to a Shetland. Definitely. That wouldn't it's not even irritating my skin and I've got really sensitive skin. Because any other wool, if that was any harsher, that would be cause electric electric shocks on my skin. And that's not doing that for me at all. So I could probably get away with wearing that with a vest top underneath in the winter. I'd be quite happy with that one. Maybe that's what I need to make a vest top. Or an old-fashioned tank top. But a stripy one. I might actually get that finished because I wouldn't have to do arms on it, would I? So has anybody else been up to anything? Because I have had a busy but quiet week. A steady week, I think. Not like touching one of my bats. Oh, Alison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah my, my bats are really pretty and i'll look them all up there all need a good home yeah they all need a good home some of them are about to get recycled into new bats the ones that i've got two of left on the website because i'm just gonna for the time being while i'm really busy i'm only doing one of each blend so once they've gone they've gone it just means that I can still list new new blends on the website, but I'm not doing two of everything, especially at the moment. Everyone's on holiday, so everything's really quiet. And it's not just me. There's quite a few people that are saying that they're, they're finding it a bit quiet. They get their influx of customers, but then all of a sudden it just goes tumbleweed. But those are your catch-up weeks. Those are the weeks that you want to get on with things. And that's why I thought, well, if I get my material in, so by the time I've finished doing these Christmas advent bags my little add-ins and my i've just ordered some new labels um so yeah once these are done then i can start doing project bags and little um little bags for like your stitch markers or whatever and maybe even do one um put on a couple of my wrap bags and i put them in the christmas advents last year didn't i Hilly? um so you've got like um is it down there in the living room it might be actually because i kept one for myself and it's a wrap bag, so like you've got two rows of pockets on the inside of it, and it's like a big square, and two rows of pockets, and you can use it for like if you've got weaving tools you want to put away, or you knit needles with your cables and things like that, and then you have a fold over section, you cover over the top of that, and then just wrap it up, and there's leather thongs on the side of it. No, I'm not being rude. Leather thongs, um, and then with my little thingy on it, and they, I'm quite proud of them. So I think I might do a couple more of those. You don't have to be a spinner or knitter or anything to to use them it could be your pencil bro pencils and paint brushes that you use them for because i've used them for store i've had them for years and i always used to use them for storing my paint brushes when i used to do a lot of um painting and drawing which i haven't done for ages i do need to get back into that again there's just not i need another two days in the week that allocated just for me to do whatever i want to do but i haven't it's never gonna happen um so no i really love doing the wrap bags and they're they're pretty simple to make it's just the cutting out that takes the longest time so i might put some of those on the website because i have got a really gorgeous where did i put it so this could actually be and do two of them but look at this see this would just be about big enough to do one of those wrap bags i think that would look pretty smart so I can do two of those out of this piece. So I definitely think I might do some of those. I've still got some thongs, some multicoloured thongs in my drawer. 
my God. Talk about innuendos. So, Alison, did you watch the um, new video I put up yesterday of the lock spinning? Yeah, I was just, um, I was going to do that as a core spin and add locks into it. Um, I will do a video like that at some other day. I just, I'm just a really sluggish week that I just thought I'll do something really simple to do. And I don't think I'd actually ever done a video apart from doing it on my live chats of doing the locks with the singles. I'll give it a go. Give it a go. Honestly, just... You know how I did that video of stripping your bat into sections and then drafting it and doing your little um, nests? Just use 50 grams of something um, and then do it like that way. But you know you can just drop me a video message and I can sit and talk you through it and I can do it one-to-one -one with you. Not a problem. Just drop me a message and make sure I'm free, which I usually am anyway. I'll drop whatever and just give you a hand. But yeah, if you feel a little bit thingy about it, then I can actually talk you through it. But honestly, you really enjoy it. It's a, it's a really good... You know when you're first starting out spinning? Unless you've been really lucky to just have the knack straight away. But majority of the time, when you first get your first spinning wheel, everything's all like thick, thin, thick, thin, thi thin, 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 thick. <laughs> and you end up spinning like that. And you end up with like a bobbin full of wheel that you don't know quite what you're going to do. Well, go back to that and just relax. Your hands don't grab and pinch it all the time. Honestly, just drop me a message, Alison. I'll be there for your love. I'll hold your hand. So, oh, did you mon did you um, knit your mum up a jumper from the Peacock stuff? No, it wasn't Peacock, was it? It was Starbuck that I did the extra order of that one for you. Yeah, Starbuck you did. Did it turn out really nice? You'll have to let me know. You'll have to send me some pictures. So, yeah. So I'm gonna. I'm thinking about doing some new style of bats, where it's it's still the two bats, but do a gradient colorway through one and then evolving into another colorway on the second one. And also, you end up with a lots of striping, and then I mean that would make the most amazing like barber pole effect if you would just spin that up. But I was thinking about it the other day. And I was like, why have I never thought of that before? You know how when you're buying yarn and some people do gradient packs? Well, why can't I do a bat where it's a, a gradient on the two bats? Do you know what I mean? Or even if it's a colour color theme where I do like, I don't know, what's popping in my head? Purple into deep blue. No, deep blue into purple, then into like a, a cabernet. And then from the cabernet into a green, into an orange, into a softer yellow or something like that. Itchy left, itchy right hand. Where's my spinning wheel and I need to rub it. Um, so yeah, I was thinking that, but doing it over two bats. So I might give that a go and see how that turns out. Not doing, uh, not yet, doing my sister a pink hand spun cardigan first. It's fab. So you're supposed to be doing your mum's. That's why you bought it. Yeah, you'll have to you'll have to show me what it looks like. I know you did the swatch and you sent me the pictures of them, but I'm looking forward to seeing what you make for you. Mum will need a picture of her. So what else? What have we got planned for this week? New theme of batty clubs are out. So 150 grams of blended fibres, 80 percent will be bfl this month so blue face leicester and that will be mixed with 20 percent of different fibers and you're not going to know what colors i've gone for um and my pictures my color images inspirations have already been sent to heather at flame knits last month so she's already done august's color theme on her beads her lamp work so she's already done those and she's got the picture for September. So I'm trying to keep her in front because she works full time. So I always try and make sure that um, when I'm doing collaborations that they're given plenty of notice. So yeah, Flame Knits. Go and look her up. She'll take commissions as well if you like, if you love her work. Her work's really, really pretty. And she did a commission. She posted it yesterday um, that she did a 
a lamp work bracelet with beads and it was actually for a bright uh, to go with a wedding theme color theme so it was obviously a gift for somebody so she did that and posted that yesterday so that was really really nice do you spin all your fiber for a project in one go or do you spin the knit the spin me i i have to do it all in one go well at least blend it all up specifically for then um, and then I will probably spin what I think I need and make sure I've got at least two bats of 100 grams put to one side in case I need it because you know when you're looking at patterns I can't for the life of me figure out the measurements that I need for my body so when I'm spinning for a I mean if I'm weaving I spin as a go or I probably spin up a certain amount and then um, because when I'm doing my dyeing not everything's all going to come out the same so I need to make sure if I'm doing it for myself personally that I've got more than enough wool to cover a project and more but as I say I do find um, weighing out what I need in comparison to what I spin for the project I need can be a little bit hit and miss so I always make sure that I do a bit more than what I actually need I think it's probably the best answer for that one um yeah if I'm doing weaving whenever I've stopped disliking the flaming thing which I'm debating about whether selling it and downsizing it or sell it I want a shaft loom but I'm never in a month so I'm just going to get a shaft loom because I need an electric carder because eventually the fibre is going to get too much for me and I need I need an electric carder and that's what I need to save up for next year um but yeah when I'm weaving um I weave probably about 300 grams to make sure I've got more than enough warping and then usually what I do is like when you've had the odd little bat that you've got to one side and then before you know it, you've got a collection of bats that you've spun up and all the colours are actually very quite pretty and complementary to each other well that's how my shawl came from it was just a collection in a basket and I just picked all the wools that all looked like they would go together um, or even just clash that a little bit do a kickstart crowdfunding I wouldn't I ain't got the gahoolies to do that Deborah no I couldn't do that I went I've, do, I've done I've got a, co, um, a coffee account and I put the links on that for a couple of my YouTube channels but us Brits are a bunch of stingy so so <laughs> so no and at the end of the day what I do now on my YouTube is generally what I make to sell um, so I'm not gonna miss out financially I don't do things that people have said, oh, I'll do. I've even thought, I've even mentioned before about doing a um, a promoted YouTube video where I die a commission up for somebody. So it's like sponsored. So if you wanted to sponsor it, but you wanted it in specific colours, and that's what I would blend up. I would die and blend for the job. And then you get a, discount, a small discount off of that, and that would be a sponsored video. But it just it's just not going to happen. So, yeah. I mean, crowdfunding is just not going to happen because I haven't got the kahunas to be cheeky to ask people for money. I will figure out and I will get it saved. And that means that my drum carder, which has just had a brand... I've just put a brand new car, um, felt on there. Um, needle card cloth on there. Brand new one. So that will get donated or sold for half of what I paid for it, as long as I get a little bit of money back in return, I'll be quite happy. But yeah, oh. do you know, Deborah Cherry, see the picture on your logo? Do you know what it makes me think of? And maybe it's because I've got my glasses and it's so flaming small. But it, and I still, it's not made no difference, that's made it worse. It looks like, no, it can't be. What is that on your logo? Because it makes me think of a Saints logo for the Southampton Football Club. It's not, but it looks like it. It's got the black and white stripes in the background and then the red and the green. And it look, maybe it's because I'm getting my eyes are getting worse. But that's what it looks like. So, yeah, I haven't got the cheek to ask to do a crowdfunding thing. I've, 
I've tried with a coffee account thing. I thought about Patreon, but I don't know how I could make Patreon exclusive. It's a clog dancer. Right, I'm going to have to proper look at that later on because it looks like the Southampton Football Club logo from here. <laughs> Which I only know because it's on the back of my car. Yes, I know. Somebody has to be. Cheeky sod. <laughs> Cheeky sod. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, I haven't got the kahunas to do that. Now, if somebody wants to do it for me, go ahead. I'll give you a full bio. <laughs> but no, I haven't. I haven't. I really could do it. I really should do it. But I just, I don't know. Maybe I should do Patreon, but I need to figure out how I could adapt Patreon. Um, maybe just do where I normally do two videos, do one video. And if you were a Patreon supporter, then you would get access to that video in verbal. But on my YouTube channel, just do it in music all the way through. That's the only way I could think of doing that. So maybe, maybe I might go on Patreon and open an account that way. Yeah. But I'm up to 73 subscriptions on my YouTube channel, which is not bad. Yeah, I know I don't get all the money. You literally, you get a commission or they take a, a fair whack of a commission off you or anyway. What well, Patreon or the... Um, crowdfunding crowdfunding do a, a limit as well um kofi i don't think they take a, a percentage off you with a, with a co uh, buy a coffee so that's why i've actually got an account with them but um and i post my videos on there as well but i'm not in america and i haven't got over a thousand followers have i it's all right i got here i'll get there Hi Anna. So it's been cloudy and overcast this morning. It was cool, really cool. I actually went out and watered my garden, never come back in drenched in sweat. And I was watering my nature pond and I've got this big piece of like log of driftwood that sits in my nature pond. So if the little birds want to go for a drink, then there's, there's somewhere for them to stand. Whereas the blackbird doesn't care. He's got his own little beach. He comes in and does his bath in and everything else and flips off but i have um i have a toad living in my pond and it wasn't for the fact that it was overcast and i was watering topping up the pond the nature pond and he came out to say oh is it raining out there sat on top of the wood for a bit realized i was there and then he went back down at the water again so i've actually picked up this toad i think two or three times out the backyard haven't i over the winter months and it was still quite mild here so I put it out in the garden like, there's a pond there, go get in it. But it means we've got no newts, which is a good thing. Ninja dropped a baby, a little mole at my feet. Thankfully, it was alive. So we had to go and... It was alive. So we had to stick it in a bucket and I sent Phil up the back to go and hide it while Ninja lay there out right in the backyard giving it, aren't I a good boy? And like, no, it's a mole. Leave the moles alone. I don't mind the moles digging up my garden. It's good for your garden to have moles. Sometimes they chop up treasure and coins out the garden as well. So, yeah. What else? What am I doing this week? What have got, what have I got planned this week? I need to think about sorting out my storage in here and having a good clear out and take some wool down at the charity shops, maybe. And sort out my material box. Um... Yeah, reorganise. Get more of my rovings dyed up for my advent calendars. And think about what colours I'm going to do for my listings this week. I am going to recycle at least two bats. So I need to think, because I did all those lovely, rich... What colours did I do last week? Oh yeah, the oranges and the deep pinks and fuchsias. So yeah, I did them, I did them last week. And I did an earthy green one. So, maybe go... Go down the route of Scardy again with blues and maybe do a tonal one. I see we do tonal ones all the time. I think I might do that large gradient one that I mentioned. That would be nice. Um, what else?
that's it that's all the news i've got project bags are coming discount codes out in your emails um and if you're actually wanting a commission your discount code if you can give me the code when you ask me to do a specific dye and blend order i do take those codes into account by the way and any orders in the uk free postage over 35 pounds yes kerry hill i have got my notes just about ready um i'm going to start washing some of the fleece this week because i might not spin it i might actually get my peg loom out maybe i'm debating whether to um to wash it and peg loom it because if i've got some nice weather then i can just sit outside with it and peg loom and chat at the same time that's what I was thinking of doing. Because I want a nice rug for in my bedroom, you see. So I thought, well, if I save some of the Kerry Hill for doing batty clubs and save some of the Kerry Hill for the actual chat and wash the majority of it, then that's a rug for me. That's what I was thinking. So I'll probably only have about... I won't bother dyeing them. I'll, I'll dye them. So I've got a couple listed. But I'll do the same as what I did for the Wissant last month and have a natural selection as well. Um, so, yeah, need to sort that out. People think I'm weird for hand spinning. Do you get asked why you spin? Um, no. No. I don't, If I'm spinning outside, I spin in my yard. Um, I have spun out my garden. But to be fair... Everybody on this street already, well, everybody that I talk to on this street, um, not to say that nobody talks to me, we've got quite a few younger families in here, and you know what the younger generations are like? They don't want to talk to neighbours. So, but everybody that knows me on this street knows what I do for a living, and they know their work out here, so they all know that I'm out with my spinning wheel every so often. So for me to walk across the back lane into my back garden is not an odd thing. Um when i go hopefully when i go and do the artisan craft fair next month at the beacon portal and whitehaven um i will let you know the date so if you are in the area you can come through and if you give me the discount code that i will announce then you will get 15 percent off of whatever i've got on the table on the day um so yeah i will be taking my spinning wheel then and spinning at the portal yeah i'm not getting my felt and needles out i'm not doing that I would rather save my felting needles for my fluff rescues. And I'd actually, if anybody's ever looking for any, I do stock felting needles. Um, I do need to get them on the website. I do the triangular ones in the Star River, uh, Star 32 gauge, is it 32 or 38 gauge? I do the triangle ones and the reverse needles. Not always just the standard ones. I do do the specialist um felt and needles so if you're ever looking for any and you've got an order coming as well just drop me a message and i will sort them out but they you can't use them against the discount code um only because i get them from the suppliers and you'll only ever want one or two of everything anyway so yeah so i don't want to bump up the price in them but i can't afford to have a discount on them so yeah they are available um i do need to put them on the website and you will find them with the project bags on the pages on my website when they're up and ready so what things do you guys find useful like do you like um little zippy purses to put your your notions in and your scissors and stuff in because i've never been one for like fittery stuff like that i understand where a project bag could become in handy i'm dying to show you my new bags but i can't it's too much i can't show you i want to but they're really cool they're really nice i'm very proud of them very proud of them so yeah so anybody got any plans for the week or any projects upcoming that you want to get on with Anyway, Alison, you're not weird. You're unique. Use small makeup bags. Yeah, that's the point about making bags, though. You you can use them for all sorts, can't you? You don't necessarily have to be for wool and knitting notions 
or for hiding your felting needles in so you don't stab yourself or maim yourself or poke an eye out. Yeah, especially with the reverse needle. You use makeup bags. Well, some of the some of the ideas I've got for making new bags are more or less like a makeup bag size. And offer you to stick in a couple of DPNs in and a printed off knitting pattern and then off you go. Because I have, hold on a minute, where is it? I have these lovely little pouches that I made myself. I have actually got two of them and one, this one sits inside the other one. Look at it, it's covered in fluff. But I like little things like this and this is part of a two bag set. So I literally just pull that out and it's got all my bits and pieces inside it. Don't even know what it's got inside it to be fair. Oh, stitch markers. Bags. Scrap bits of material. Do you know what that is? That's when you've literally got to your table and oh, I need space and just grabbed everything and flung it in the nearest thing you could find. Book markers. Be magic sewing needle down to one. Down to one magic sewing needle. Useless thread. Ribbons. It's amazing. This is only a tiny little thing. Warping string from my inkle loom. Velcro pads that I've pinched off a bag. <laughs> Moshi tape. It's like delving into my handbag. Longer bags like a drawstring bag type thing. Sewing needle with a magic needle on it. Oh, yellow thread. You know, I was looking for a yellow thread the other day. Didn't even know that was there. Another useless freebie out of a sewing box. What else? An inkle loom weaving card. Everybody needs a plastic woggle. Felting thumb guards. That are too big for my thumb. I have small bags and tins in every project bag, about 10 on the go at any one time. I know that's what it's like. You've got to not have an idea where everything, a pen lid with no pen, and some stitch markers and some ribbons. Stitch markers. A backing off a popping stub, which I don't like them ones because I've got to cut through the material and it makes everything look really scruffy. A DPN stopper that never stays on. It doesn't stay on them. I've tried. They don't work. Go and have a look. Up. Um, if you have the same problem as me, Tam, I made, I'll have to, I'm sure I've got one. I don't know where it is. Tamsin. Tamsin, when you watch later on, drop your link down below or something. Tamsin the Purple Peapod makes these great uh, DPN stoppers. I don't know what I've done with it. It is around here somewhere. And it's like a little plastic figure eight with a little plastic uh, metal bit in the middle and she has a charm off of it. And you stick both your DPN ends or your knitting needles in the end. It stops all your stitches coming off. So she does them. You'll find her on you'll find them on her Instagram. So yeah. So it's like looking in a woman's handbag, isn't it? It's all sorts of useless at the time things. But when you need it, bet I can't flame and remember where it is. Bit markers. Why have I got bit markers? I don't know. Yeah, so I've got that one, that small one there, and I do have a larger one around. So when I'm not you when the larger one's got nothing in it, this sits inside it and they're both like Designed that way to sit in on top. So I might do a couple of those as well because they're really handy to have. And they just fit inside your handbag as well. So if you want to take your knitting with you to work. So when you're on your lunch break and you're just chilling out. Yeah, they're perfect for doing that. So yeah. Hiya Rachel. Yeah, I've got I've got a basket with everything in it and some of the stuff I haven't even looked at for about 18 months. And each sort of my weaving baskets. And I need to pull everything out of all of that because I really am thinking about selling my, my Kromsky Harp loom. It's just too much for me. It's too much to mess around with. 
So what time are we at? On my iPad. Don't know what's going on this iPad at the moment. 20 to 2. Right, well that is probably my hour up and done with because I've just sat here and waffled, which is what I seem to do on a Saturday. So thank you very much for joining in on Joe's Waffle Day. Um, I'm going to pop off now. I'm going to get my iron on and get some sewing done. And if you've got any comments or things you want me to do on my YouTube channel, just drop me a comment below or even on over my, my channel on Willie Cottage Fibre Shop. Um, I'm not doing any other orders for my fluff rescues, not my fluff rescues, my Christmas advents. But that's not to say if you don't pop in a request between now and next month that I can't maybe arrange something because I am up to quota. I have had a couple of inquiries and I'm debating but only on private request. So let me know if you do want a Christmas advent. Um, let me know before the middle of August because I've got nearly all the will died now. Um so yeah in the next two weeks it will be all ready for me to start processing and packaging in the next two three weeks so if you do want one let me know and we'll see what we can come up with in advance okay take care of yourselves it's nice and cool out there go and get some gardening done what are you doing sitting there go and get some work done take care of yourself bye